Benatai, Rabbi Lai, Kiblu Mehim, Yeshua Mibrachia, and Itai Arbeli, they accepted from him, from, from Yossi Ben Yuez and Yossi Ben Yohanan. Yeshua Ben Rachia, Omer Rabbi Shua Ben Rachia says, Ase Lecha Rav, make for yourself a rabbi. You have to acquire for yourself a teacher. Meaning, you have to have somebody who teaches you the halachot, who teaches you a, a proper Jewish outlook, hashkafa, who goes and you can ask questions to when you get stuck. And that way, a person will have clarity. Uh, many times, people make mistakes, both in their uh, personal lives, when their halachic uh, decisions, in, in, in every single part of their life, do, they make huge mistakes due to the fact that they don't have a rabbi. So you have to have also rav. It doesn't say rabbeu. It says, make for yourself a rabbi. Have one rabbi. A person sometimes can get into the yitzhara of rabbi shopping. He goes and he says, oh, I use this rabbi, he's leaning for this. I call that rabbi, he's leaning for that. You know, you know he tells, uh, Frecha. He says, no, call the rabbi, ask you to get a leniency. No, rabbi said, no, nah, was, yeah. Okay, one second. Shh. Okay, I got another phone number. Call this rabbi, see if he gives a leniency. And he goes one by one. He should go again and hear what he, wants, what he wants to hear. So therefore, a person has to make sure you choose one rabbi who's knowledgeable, you trust him, he knows what he's talking about, and you go with him in the fire and the water. Whatever he says, yes, no, you trust him, he knows what he's talking about, he has smicha, he has a rabbi also, and you, you follow him, you get his guidance, because many times we're biased, many times you can give into the Yitzhara, and we need to have a rabbi who can guide us properly. Acquire for yourself a friend. What does he mean, acquire for yourself a friend? I remember I was in Yeshiva, and I wasn't, so connecting with everybody in yeshiva you know some guys they're from different parts of the world and uh i didn't connect with them so well and I, I grew up differently you know i was sephardi on top of that and i was uh, having a hard time adjusting so i told the rosh yeshiva you know i, I don't f- f- think i fit in the yeshiva i don't think i'm gonna i can stay here and maybe i should find a different yeshiva i don't connect with them. i don't have so many friends here so he said to me where does it say in the pikei avod you acquire yourself an entourage acquire for yourself friends it says all you have to do is one good friend. One good friend, is all, that's all that's important. A lot of times, people think, you know, like the social media can teach us. You have to have 20,000 followers. You have to have 50,000 friends on Facebook. All these things. And what? Are these any real friends? Are you going to call them for anything? They're going to come help you? Not really. It's just for show. It's just for high buy, right? But at the end of the day, what it really matters, even one good friend is all you need. One good friend. What does Rabbi Yonah say you need a friend for? Speak the Torah, to get advice from, to speak about your problems with. They're going to have, you know, someone to hear you out, someone to let you speak out your, your, your issues that you hold bottled up inside. That's what a friend, one, one is more than enough to accomplish that. So therefore, it's better to have real friends and then to have a lot of like, whatever friends, not really there for you friends. And then someone told me one time, every, the word friend always ends with the letters E and D. There's always an end. You have friends in the beginning, you, you change your job, you change where you live, you get married, whatever. You move on and your friends don't go always with you. Your friends change. Sometimes it ends. Sometimes the relationship ends. So therefore, a person shouldn't be worried too much about having so many friends. All matters is to have at least one good friend. Have you done kol adam and judge every person favorably. person has to go and not realize that we can never understand what somebody else is going through. We don't know why they're doing what they're doing. We don't know the feelings they're feeling. And we'll never know. When can we go and judge them? When they're when they're in, we're in their shoes. Are we going to ever be in their shoes? No. So therefore, a person has to always judge another person favorably and give benefit of the doubt. This things yourself from a bad neighbor. Don't live next to people who are wicked. A lot of times people want to move to different places, you know. I want to move to this place, this place, everybody's moving, you heard? Everybody's moving to this place, oh, you heard? Everybody, let's go to, you know, whatever it is, this place, that place, that state, this other state, this other city, the nearby, whatever. It's it's happening, it's a happening place, it's the best place, everything's good. Uh, and what? God forbid there's some wicked people there. God forbid there's people who are not so religious there. People are going to bring you down. And what? That's something to think about. Mm. No, but listen, I'm going to have a bigger house. But, but listen, it's going to be nice weather. Or listen, it's going to be a oh, kai. What a person has to think about is the Shema. Are they going to bring you up or bring you down? What about your kids? How are your kids going to grow up? What, what are they going to learn from? Or are they going to get influenced on the right or the wrong? So every person has to think about these things and distance yourself from a bad neighbor. Do not befriend the wicked person. The person says, yeah, it's okay. I became religious, but my friends are still not religious. It's okay, I hang out with them. I don't learn from them. Yeah, they curse. Yeah, they don't uh, keep kosher 100%. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not so tanua 100%. It's okay. Don't worry, I, 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 they, okay, they, they, they go and they, uh, let's say, sometimes friends, they have smoke, friends that smoke weed. 
you know, but I'm not going to learn from them. I'm going to hang out with them. I'm, I'm not affected by it. So it says, no, do not befriend the person who is wicked because as the famous saying goes, that you know, tell me who your friends are and I will know who you are. And then the person goes into a tannery. Tannery stinks. The person walks in there, walks out. You're going to smell. You do a shashlik, even though you didn't eat, you're going to smell like shashlik. You're going to smell like the barbecue. So therefore, a person has to know. Even if you're next to them, even if you don't want to do anything they do, you're going to get affected and they're going to get into your subconscious. And do not give up on seeing when you see the punishment of the wicked. If you see someone who's wicked and he's successful, do not try to be friends with him and therefore try to join him on his good fortune. Because at the same time, you should know that a Kaddish Baruch Hu's punishment will come. A Kaddish Baruch Hu will punish the wicked in the end of the day. And therefore, the way they said the world is round. One day you're up, could be you'll be down. Even when you're down and you feel suffering, you should know we might come back up, that we will come back up and Puranud, punishment.